Guys, if you have watched the Agent DKI videos and if you still feel uncertain in your interviews or designing any Agent DKI system, I'll tell you it's not your fault. Most Agent DKI content online is not an enterprise AI. It's basically the chatbot that is dressed up as the agent. No approvals, no audit trials, no governance. Now, that's exactly why the strong engineers feel in the Agent DKI interview. So today, I'll show you what an actual enterprise Agent DKI looks like. The kind the companies expect you to understand, design and deliver. So once you see this architecture, you'll instantly know why most demos and most answers fall apart. Guys, let me just give you a visual understanding. So this is not your chatbot. Okay, I'll be very honest with you. This is never a chatbot. This is a system that behaves like a digital program manager. It can read the JIRA tickets. It can understand the risk. It can track the dependencies between the task, communicate the status, take action and enforce the governance. And not only that, it's going to log every decision for auditability purpose. Basically, it's an AI that operates inside the enterprise constraint here to assist the program manager. Now, let's break down layer by layer so that you understand completely as how does the enterprise agent DKI system would look like. See, if you look at it on top, there's nothing fancy. I've just set up this streamlit as the front end. In reality, we will also have the React based front end. If your project is very big, if the client has their own front end requirements, you will definitely have a React based front end over there. Okay, for simplicity, I've just mentioned the Streamlit front end, which is a functional UI. Now, here in this functional UI, we have created various tabs in this functional UI. We have the tabs such as daily status, risk dashboard, as copilot, approvals, and the audit trial. So, this tells you something which is very important that is, enterprises they don't care about chat. They care about visibility and having a control. So the, e the UI that you would be seeing or when you build this enterprise system, they're not here for chat purpose. That's basically for the decision oversight. Managers will not be asking to this agent DKI system as, hey AI, how are you or can you play me the song? It's basically the product managers or the program managers will be asking the question as, what is the risk today in my program? Who needs the approval? What changed since yesterday? Or look into the next sprint and tell me what are the key information or the risk that I'm aware of. Like for example, there can be a winter break and there is a employee availability or the team's unavailability. Now, how do you convey this risk to the upper management? So those are the exact questions that you would be asking your agent DKI system. Got it? So that's what you would be having in the front end. Now this front end can be anything for the simple demonstration I mentioned as Streamlit. It can be React. That's another common front end framework that is being used to create the front end as per the company's requirement. Next layer, we have the fast API backend, the real enterprise gatekeeper. Now, this is critical because in enterprises, you don't expose the agents in a direct manner. You don't let the UI to talk to the LLM directly. So what this fast API does over here is it's going to take care of the authentication, request validation, logging, role based access control, that is RBAC enforcement and the API contracts all being set inside this fast API backend. And this is where the security teams sleep peacefully actually in your enterprise setting. And AI without the API boundaries is actually a disaster. Then what you have inside it, it's basically the Lang graph, the brain. It's not the chatbot. Okay, so here comes the heart of our system. Okay, this is called as the heart of our system. We have this LangGraph based workflow orchestrator. This is where most people would get it wrong. LangGraph is not about chaining the prompt. It's not about the sequential call. 
to most people they just look into the uh, foundational tutorial and they think that i can create a dynamic prompt and i can get a response but the enterprise agent ki system is not just that so it acts like a workflow orchestrator it's a stateful orchestration that means it can remember the state when it is moving from one state to the another state that's called as a stateful orchestrator it is used for controlled agent execution that means we know which agent to call at what step and what are its dependencies and we can clearly set it and more importantly it whatever the reasoning and the execution that could happen it is enterprise safe so every step that you would be seeing in the line graph workflow whenever you create it it will have something called as state it will have transition between one state to the next state it can pause for human approval it can uh, even pause for execution and it can be audited so this is why enterprises love graph based orchestration and line graph is one such framework which allows it and that's what i'm showing you for the demo purpose now let's enter the multi agent system that you're seeing right here the if you notice there is very one key critical thing that's happening inside it so we have various agents we have planner agent jira analyst agent risk agent dependency agent communication agent ask action agent governance agent and evaluator agent to look closely each agent has its own responsibility it has just got only one job not multiple jobs it just has got one specialized job and that's how you make the complex agent ki system to be working always and if we i give you an example let's say if i consider the planner agent the goal is to break down into steps no execution only thinking it just have to look into the prompt which is basically from the program manager understand what his question and break down into steps so remember it's going to just do the planning and not it will not do anything okay no action and we have the jira analyst agent now what it does is it has got the integration with jira okay it, this has got the integration with jira it will understand the tickets in jira it will extract the signals from jira that's it nothing else it will just extract the same from the jira now there is also the uh, service now is present in case if i want to have the service now data as well i'll have one more specialized agent to fetch this data from the service now which i'll call it as the snore analyst which is service now analyst so that's my integration there is no hallucination only structured interpretation of the tool then i'll have a risk agent so from the jira analyst there is a key thing that you need to remember there's a parallel execution that is happening the data from jira is being sent to risk agent and dependency agent in parallel that's what you see right here too if i want to give you about the risk agent here the risk agent will ask as what can go wrong what is blocked and what is delayed that's what the risk agent is going to do the analysis i have the dependency agent which will check the cross theme impact it will also check the upstream downstream it will also look into the hidden blockers so what this dependency agent is going to do is with this analysis it can even save millions of dollars for the efficient working then we have the communication agent so the output from dependency agent and risk agent will flow together to the communication agent it will summarize everything it is like a summary agent which will summarize the risk and the dependencies for the stakeholders and here the reason the summarization is important because i don't want technical logs if the product manager or the program manager is looking at it he or she do not want the raw technical logs we want the clear narratives right that's where the communication agent would come into picture then we have the action agent it will only execute after the analysis after the checking the risk after the dependency checks and then we have the governance agent and trust me this is a most ignored part in your learning journey might you might have uh, 
you might have learned just agent eki to build a workflow remember in the enterprise setting governance agent is a very important one this is where we check for policy whether the action is allowed whether it is working as per the expectation whether it is working under the enterprise constraint role based access control compliance approval rules all those are part of this governance agent and this is what separates from your simple demos to the enterprise deployment and then we have a evaluator agent and this is very critical for your enterprise agent dki system this is going to check the output quality decision correctness and agent behavior more importantly the output from the evaluator will become the input for fine tuning our individual agent so after tuning we'll again perform the evaluation it's a continuous loop that we always have to set it's not okay i'll deploy once i'll forget it in the enterprise setting it's a loop that happens every time evaluation iteration that is tuning of these agent using the various uh, common techniques we'll, we can talk about it in the next video but yeah we will have the various elements to fine tune it and then reiterate the evaluation so that's the iterative step okay in this way when you implement these kind of loops evaluation tuning evaluation loop it's going to improve the system in a safe manner and as i mentioned we have the integration the system over here in this example it talks to jira and service now it's not a mock api it will be a real apis okay the real enterprise system is what you would be interacting with it means if there's any mistake in fetching the data it's going to cost money and actions will have consequences and logs is going to be matter specifically if you're working with the healthcare and similar domain the logs is important for your SOC compliance and that is why the governance exists and we also have guardrails which for authentication and role-based access control pi detection very important for your banking and finance and even the healthcare projects and rate limiting this is very important this is to avoid misuse of your agent and more importantly here in all these settings, you can see that you might think that why am I having all these components? It is going to become, it is going to make my agent EKI system slower. But remember, in the enterprise setting, we don't want speed, we want safety, we want accountability of the system that is being built. Remember, that's the reason that you have all these things. And if your agent EKI cannot detect PII, if it cannot throttle the abuse with the help of rate limiter if it cannot let's say enforce the access control it never goes to the production you'll never get an approval from your board so don't make this mistake and even if you are a founder don't ever just think like you're founding like a toy project don't ever do that mistake and then we have a data layer this is where the memory with accountability comes you will have two databases, not one one for post GRE SQL database for storing your chat and workflow state, which will store the conversation, your decision, approvals, audit logs, all will be over here. You'll have to define the schema to store it in an efficient way. You will have to ensure that if you're building this kind of system, when you're setting up the database, ensure that you also mention the uh, time to consider the server time, not and the user interaction especially if you're having the users all around the globe ensure that you log it in an appropriate manner and we also have another post GRE sql database with pgp extra extension which will help us to store the embeddings context and knowledge base now the reason that generally recommended to keep separate because memory is not equal to records the enterprises require both the data as well as let's say the uh, logs as well as the knowledge base okay and there is a redis database this will have the rate limiting this will include caching and it will also enable us for the performance production now if you can explain this architecture guys you can clearly explain how agents are collaborating how are you enforcing the governance how you would handle the approvals 
how you would audit the AI decision boundaries and how do you deploy them in a safe manner. This is the interview level clarity that I want you to have. So don't worry about buzzwords if anyone is talking about or don't care about hype. Just build this system level thinking team. Okay. Now, what I've shown you right now is I've shown you the complete enterprise architecture that is what and why. Okay. So guys, if this makes sense, if it helps you, go ahead and use it and start building it. Now, I've intentionally not shown you the exact land graph state schema, approval gate, how it works, or evaluation hooks, production deployment strategy, Kubernetes setup, monitoring and audit mapping. So guys, I've intentionally skipped it because that's not my YouTube topic. That's the bootcamp level depth, I would say. But more importantly, guys, just if you're just having this strategy, it would help you. And in case if you want to build in depth, then not just talk about it, then you already know where to go. Check out the link in the description. And remember, Agent EKI is not about the clever prompts. It's about controlled intelligence. And this architecture is how enterprises actually do it. I'll see you inside. And subscribe to our channel for more such insightful videos on Agent EKI, interview preparation, and your system architecture. I look forward to helping you next time, guys. Take care.